what we are going to handle today is this tough problems and whenever problems are tough what do we do we find out on scientific solutions and nowhere else i have seen this happening than that in today's topic adolescent aub we are fortunate today that we have wonderful teachers teachers who are going to guide us and teachers who are going to teach us i am keenly looking forward to them the questions here though i may be conducting quite a few have come over a period of years with deepak bhai's discussions and at so many platforms in fact nearly every week we talk uh, every day we wish each other well so that is goes without saying that this is a joint panel discussion though like swami vivekananda is like, like ram krishna paramahansa direct disciples all were very powerful but swami vivekananda was more vocal and therefore he conducted therefore he took ram krishna mission and ram krishna's principles ahead in the same way i am vocal today because deepak bhai is not fully well and fine but then we know that all are very powerful he is also very powerful and a very brilliant and a very ethical gynecologist so such teachers have studied us so now let's go <laughs> and first we'll start with the physiological situations which can present to us as aubs so often i see my wife reassuring the mothers of adolescent subjects coming for help for irregular menstrual cycle don't worry this is an expected pattern in a developing age this is a very standard answer she gives many times so once i asked her which all patterns do you call an expected pattern in this age group may i request the teachers who have already been sent the situations i will not call them panelists but teachers to please give their inputs as to what they consider as an expected pattern in developing age any teacher can answer please okay sir i'll take this question please sir first of all good evening everyone and thank you very much for being teacher of teachers sir good evening uh and thank you very much patel sir uh, to include all of us uh, in this uh, uh, program sir to start we probably not only madam but almost most of the gynecologists and obgyns they have the same i mean uh, opinion regarding the uh, irregularity of the menses and especially in the girls uh, who, who have just started their menarche probably it is because of the immaturity and irregularity of the hpo axis actually uh, uh, this can i mean uh, not all the irregularities or the problems of menstruation they are included in this uh, i mean uh, casual things but uh, certain, for example the infrequent cycles or the prolonged cycles uh, or the dysmenorrhea then uh, menstruation followed by the spotting for many days uh, uh, so these are the situations where we can say that these are the expected uh, patterns in the developing age but there are certain condition for example if the girl has started menarche and if she is coming with the huge i mean uh, uh, this bleeding with the clots lot of clots so uh, then such conditions they may not be uh, uh, with the usual pattern probably she may have some other like disease for example the coagulopathy yes, or something that. that that is the first situation yeah. in the pathology so so, so my my personal feel is that uh, even i to uh, tell most of the mothers that when the girls they are coming with the irregularity of the menstrual cycle then most of the time they are the expected pattern in the developing age excellent thank you very much now i have brought in us uh, evidence based recommendations 
uh, because as I told you, the next week also I am conducting not an uh, this panel, but a completely exclusive on PCOS in adolescents. Uh, but this I came across in, in that search. And what does it say? The time post binarchy, if it is less than one year, then irregular menstrual cycles are normal pubertal transition. Uh, Guinness, please uh, let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, if it is if the from post minarchy more than one year, but less than three years, then if our cycles are less than 21 days or more than 45 days, that is abnormal. If it is she is more than three years post minarchy, then 21 days less than that, or more than even 35 days, or if she gets less than eight cycles per year, that's not good. See the time three years post minarchy. More than one year post minarchy, any cycle on more than 90 days for any cycle bleeding, any time more than one year post minarchy, as, as Girish has correctly pointed out, more than 90 days for any one cycle, and that is abnormal. And primary amenorrhea went to label by age of 15 years or more than three years post thalarchy, and thalarchy Gayatri Bear has already discussed, so you know what it is. We come to the next physiological situation, which I am seeing now, and I had expected it when I was in when I was a resident because it was happening in Japan. Nowadays, many mothers seek appointment of gynex as their daughters seem to have started menstruating early. These may be as early as in fourth, even fourth, probably third standard of school, around nine to ten years of age, to such a small child. Now, is this normal? Can my teachers tell me? Should I be at peace? Is this normal at starting to menstruate at eight and nine in a third standard and fourth standard? Is it normal? Uh, can any of the teachers take it up, please? Can I, sir? Yes, please, please. Rajal Ben Maratamaru, uh, I'm going to require you specifically for one situation. Uh, I'll be coming to that later. Yes, please, please, please. Okay, good evening all and uh, thank you very much, Mr. Patel, sir, and team for inviting me. Uh, yes, we have been seeing the same situation and if we re I relate to myself, then again, when I was in ninth standard, I had my first periods and then we see the young girls. This is because their uh, uh, increase in the nutritional status, increase in their weight also because we need a particular optimum weight when the, to start the pubertal events. So the increase in the body mass and the environmental pollutants that the plastics and etc. Oh, are giving oh, the, the estrogen and other hormones in several sprays and the products and the creams. And this oh, lead to early changes. And so we have to, we are dealing with this situation and the girls are coming much earlier. Thank you. Excellent it. input. I had expected this from Rajal Ben. Uh, uh, to those who are here still present at nine o'clock, uh, my point is that it started in Japan and in Scandinavian countries, not in US. First, the sinking of the uh, of the binarchal age, and uh, and uh, rather than uh, Japanese girls are not obese. They are they they are universally uh, not. It has been the first point which you pinpointed is what has been attributed to. And that is nutrition. Improved nutrition is has been directly where their genetics are getting now manifested. You know, the so-called epigenetics also is not coming here. This is a genetic manifestation which was remaining hidden and now it is getting manifested. But it will not go beyond a point. Let us be very clear and be reassured. It is not sinking below seven in Japan and Scandinavian countries. It is fixed there. So it will remain and we need not worry about it. Brilliant answer, Rajal Ben. Thank you. I had expected it from you. Uh, of, of, many of them come in fear. Once again, a physiological situation. This is a common belief. I don't know whether it is there in Maharashtra and other parts of the country. But I, be, I see this belief in India, yeah, in Gujarat. Uh, and they, they address me straight as uncle. Now they address me as Dadaji. Uncle, uncle see, I have started menstruating now. Now, why my height? Now my height won't increase. That is what is our fear. I am sure I want to grow more in height. How true is an apprehension? Can somebody tell me? Say, um, uh, Rajendra will give some other also, also a chance. Uh, any of our friends would like to? Jignesh Bhai or anyone can? Because I don't have a list of the panelists here. List I would have. Um, uh, yes, sir. Yes, Amiben, please. Uh, 
the height of the child actually depends upon the genetics too yeah. and uh, there is a uh, closure of the uh, growth plate so each has growth plate in their long bones and the closure of the growth plate occurs with menarche but still the evidence says that there is definitely increase in the height for 2 to 3 inches even after oh, the menarche so you. we can rest assure her that that you should not worry and focused on the height will definitely increase and she should focus on exercise, proper uh, diet with uh, uh, protein and uh, calcium, vitamin D. And these are the important things uh, right. we can tell her. Right. A, a, a surgeon's wife and a robotic surgeon's mother has spoken. It cannot be wrong. She has to be very brilliant. Sir, I want to, to come to that very soon. No, Rajal, we have got lots of ground to cover and she has nearly covered well. Please pardon me. Uh, please pardon me. Uh, a sister system has failed. Girish, uh, sorry to call you uh, to uh, attention again uh, in a very short time. Others of our age start, stop bleeding in two to three days, maximum four, said an anxious mother as she walked into our consulting room. She bleeds every time for eight to ten days. This time she just goes on spotting and bleeding, spotting and bleeding, sometimes quite heavy, but hardly any clots. Fine. Could this be bleeding diathesis? How should we handle this case? Uh, Girish, you had hinted this, therefore I am bringing it, bringing you here, please. Yeah. So, uh, sir, uh, as uh, I already mentioned that many girls, they are facing the, uh, this kind of problems that is the bleeding uh, problems. So, coagulopathy is one of the reasons for the puberty menorrhagia especially or a heavy menstrual bleeding, I can say, not menorrhagia. So, these kind of girls, they will present with the heavy menstrual bleeding even there at their first first menarche, I mean first episode and such uh, girls they may have the family history or history of uh, excessive bleeding in other surgical procedures or something else and if the, that girl is uh, already diagnosed as having some coagulopathies then that family and that girl should be counseled properly because she may have the uh, bleeding episode in the school or whenever she is out so proper counseling of the family and uh, the counseling of that girl should be done in such kind of cases and these girls they should be treated along with the help of hematologist and not only the single gynecologist should take the lead for the management of such kind of girls. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Girish, you still stay with me because there are uh, two or three slides that I want your uh, concurrence or telling no straight, right, right. Uh, you have a right to tell no, please. It does not because I have brought a fly slide doesn't mean you cannot oppose. Uh, this is not a managing committee meeting of Foxy. Even there I was opposing. So there is no problem. Uh, heavy menstrual bleeding, most common bleeding diseases, von Willebrand's disease, platelet function defects, thrombocytopenia and clotting factor deficiencies. These are most common. Yes. Sir. Approximately 50% of adolescent girls with bleeding disorders present with heavy menstrual bleeding. So that is where they are going to present to you even before they go to others. Uh, and lastly, Recurrent hemorrhagic corpus luteum with or without rupture or hemoperitoneum with ovulation, which is quite significant, also can be gynecologic indication of a bleeding disorder. Please don't jump into doing a laparotomy or a laparoscopy. Please get this ruled out. Anemia that results from bleeding can cause associated symptoms of headaches and fatigues and uh, Rajal Ben is an expert in adolescent anemia. She's working a lot, I know. And uh, uh, therefore uh, she, but then this is what are my observations. Um, uh, 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 is there anything add you, you want to add Girish to this? Or, uh, or, 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 or refuse, you know, this is not right. No, no, sir. This is absolutely right. And sir, one more thing, uh, uh, along with this, uh, usually the family history of same episode uh, either in the mother or the sister or near relatives, that is also very uh, important. So if the such kind of history is there, then the proper uh, clinical assessment of that girl and proper counseling and then the management along with yeah, the I had expected this from you. Thank you very much. Can I, can I, can I add one situation more? Uh, yeah, please, 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 please. Uh, uh, you know, Episexes. Yes. Episexes. Episexes yes. is one thing, uh, you know, I mean, recurrent episexes, not one incidence, but recurrent episexes would we'll probably point out to a coagulation uh, issue or something. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. This is, this is hard clinical practice. And I want hard clinical practice. I mean, yes, quickly and uh, we go so, for it. 
sir when we are most of the time first we prescribe them the uh, hormonal pills so when we are giving the pills and she is not recovering within two or three days the, then there must be that wow. should give us the clue that there is something wow. other than the anovulation wow. great I, i i want to tell I all the my teachers here that please uh, at the previous lectures no i'm not talking uh, i'm talking of the endometrios and pco they were excellent they have covered very well but we have to take that from there and bring it to clinical practice these points which dr girish dr deepak bai and dr amin and then mentioned they are fiercely clinical so please i have always as a teacher felt that bring it what is the audience the audience are clinicians here please bring it to the clinical level and this is what you people have done thank you very much we come to the next situation where this balance is going to be critical uh mrs miss bp 18 years young girl came with her mother because if i say mrs then uh, uh, then uh, manu bai will start jumping uh, miss bp 18 years young girl came with her mother for gynec consultation for menstrual complaints she has history of prolonged spotting after her menses her menstrual cycles are heavy her usg picture on 12th day of spotting shows on one side there is a developing follicle please see the sonography picture uh, all coming from my hospital uh, right side regular multi cystic ovary but see the endometrium here it is so many days she is bleeding and the endometrium is a thin line endometrium now this is an aub with a thin line endometrium we are not managing aub just like that aub with a thin line endometrium either divya ben or someone can tell us as to how what we should do about this so dr pitani madam yes please i can hear you so in this case we can give uh, ocp cycles to her so that we build up the endometrium and then will she will have uh, proper uh, menstruation in this she is having symptoms like atrophic endometrium is bleeding okay deepak bhai anything to tell no because this is thin line there is no not enough of estrogen and she rightly said this question requires estrogen in addition to progesterone thank more you. of estrogen super super thank you very much now this is where the the balance has got disturbed in favor of estrogen you know we, we always consider as teacher we used to tell that the it is like a estrogen progesterone are the reins of the horse if one of them is stronger the horse completely turns here the estrogen is stronger and this is where i want rajal then rajal then uh, i hope you have not uh, uh, gone to take dinner and come back you will make me jealous sir i already had my dinner at 6 uh, thank you a uh, typically anxious mother walks into the consultation room with complaint that her adolescent daughter overshoots her expected date of menstruation and then bleeds profusely for 10 to 15 days okay the episodes are occasionally quite heavy so much so that she has to miss her schools and tuitions so amenorrhea followed by bleeding and quite heavy her usg picture on eighth day post menstruation is this uterus is normal in size nothing great about it the ovary also both of them are fine but then there is some problem with the receptor the endometrium you are on the only on eighth day and that too after this bleeding has built up to 10 mm okay so now rajal ben you gave a brilliant answer in booth this is the only question which i have repeated from booth and i want you to give your the, the uh, this of your knowledge to to everybody here immediate arrest of bleeding because when she bleeds profusely first we immediately arrest and maintenance hormones to counteract the unmedicated estrogen playing the havoc with her endometrium So we need But my add. question is, the choice before us is I, I got a, a, a question from Malaga uh, just a couple of days back regarding this. Uh, nine, we have got testosterone derivatives and we have got progesterone derived progestins. Uh, I wish what which should we should use in this case either because the estrogen is uh, powerful we pull the progesterone either or doesn't matter. Rajal Ben, please. we need to add progesterone and that too with the madroxy progesterone acetate okay uh, amit then would you like to uh, come in uh, sir i have heard uh, this uh, uh, panel discussion in booth too yes, and tell then us. 
then thoroughly went through the things and uh, the literature clearly sta states that all norachisterone are getting some part is converted into ethinyl estradiol so by giving 5 mg there is production of 10 microgram of ethinyl estradiol so instead of priming again endometrium with ethinyl estradiol better is to go with medroxyprogesterone acetate and now currently the retard preparations of medroxyprogesterone yes. are also available so the yes. best choice will be Medroxy. But madam, my, my question is this. Hmm. Immediate arrest is required. For, for immediate, for immediate for uh, arrest, we need to give the high amount of your estrogen progesterone combination. Uh, or, or, or the testosterone or the... progesterone. This is only for a short time, three days. Then no, after no, we uh, switch over to this is a no, 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 which, for... uh, which has come. For immediate arrest, testosterone derived progesterone. And for maintenance, as the Amid and say. Uh, the, the other progesterone. Uh, yes, Purvi Ben can uh, join or uh, even uh, uh, our uh, Dodakya Saheb or anybody. Yes, please. Even we can also add tranexamic acid along yeah, with... That, that is okay. That is okay. No, no, no. I will not hit you below the bell. Please, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> I am a very clear player. I, they are all I think progesterone. By, very, very clear. I think I would give notice this here only. For yes, three days. Then, then we... Then switch over to Medroxy later on after three or four days. Thank you very much. Yeah, so we have to stop it. You have to stop the bleeding. This is an evidence-based slide. Uh, yes. uh, uh, ben, you are, you are also very right. Your basis is very sound. But that is for the maintenance part of it. And there, people are jumping from one to the other. Depends on which medical representative. Sorry, some of them. <laughs> depending on which medical representative has been more forceful. That is where I, me and Rajal Bain and all will like to use science. And your science is very sound. And that is where this comes in. Uh, I hope you will agree to this. Now, we are coming to a situation where, or as you told me the other day, all situations are different. A situation which is baffling. And what is baffling about it? Mrs. A presented her daughter for your consultation with a complaint that she commenced her cycles light. Light. She commenced it light and remained so for about two years. After this, she stopped bleeding and has not bled for now six months, leading to definitely less than eight cycles. The recommendation which we brought in to label a particular pattern as irregular, if you all remember, Purvi Ben will remember, or I think Divya Ben will also remember. After this, she stopped bleeding and has not bled for now. You ask the young lady in question and she says she does not have any headache or visual disturbance. Her ultrasound is non-contributory. Should we get her serum prolactin level done? And can they be high? And if so, what is to be done? Any of my teachers can guide me in this. In this case, we should get a TSH and prolactin done. Prolactin, what is concerned about prolactin? The cause of amenorrhea. So, pro, and, and, and in that case, you, you can switch over to bromocriptine? So, cabagolin will be a better choice in this case. Okay, better compound you mean to say? Okay, uh, no problem. Uh, T3, T4, TSH only if they are altered and not prolactin. Thyroxine, do you think thyroxine is a oh. overhyped drug? I'm not going to waste lots of time on this. Do you think we are giving lots and lots of, uh, lots and lots of hype to an uh, actor like Johnny Walker or Katrina Kaif who can only uh, you know, enhance the glamour quotient or a comedy quotient. Uh, say if you're, you're excellent cooks, I know Ami Ben is, uh, and uh, as excellent cooks, what do you do if, if dal has less salt? You add dal from, you salt from above. So if thyroid is less, you add thyroid uh, uh, supplementation from above. Why are we jumping so much on thyroxine? Probably that is where marketing is coming uh, in the way. Uh, let us not uh, overhype it. Uh, do you agree that we should also get T3, T4 and TSH done in these cases, Divya Ben? Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. And treat accordingly. Fine, I'm not going to it, but I'm bringing you to sharp focus. Mm -hmm. And that is where Ami Ben will be required. I, I'm going to use uh, Dodakya Sahib's, uh, uh, Dodakya Sahib's expertise, uh, if he's still there, at one another point, where he is a master. Miss SS, a 15 years young girl who overshoots her expected date of menstruation, and bleeds then after for 10 to 15 days. These episodes are occasionally heavy, but in difference to the what that previous situation was, here she looks plump. 
other her mother attributes it to junk food liking you notice a faint line of hair on her upper lip suggestive of hyperandrogenism her usg picture on 16th day of post menstruation is as follows you can see here probably probably good for a good practitioner this might be the last usg pictures in an adolescent for diagnosis of pcos why will be coming to that and you can see here you can see more than the the, the the distribution of follicles see the stroma so dense okay that is where from there all the villains are getting uh, uh, excreted in the system and see these on uh, on a on a so called 4d scan now we come to the problem of handling aub of pcos in adolescents we have got an excellent background from gayatri ben so i request my teachers to help us to filter that background and bring it to clinical practice medical uh, girish i i am bringing to you to the question uh, you can i will return you in adolescent pcos should not be diagnosed unless both irregular menstrual cycle and hyperandrogenism are there till then it is not a pcos nowadays the term gynecological age is used to ally to align with international pediatric guideline and i know raju bhai doshi is here from uh, uh, raju bhai is here from junagadh and he drew my attention that what is gynecological age so at what gynecology gynecological age is where she has started um, um, uh, she are they from our minarchy okay it could be 3 years post minarchy for it could be 19 20s or sorry 17 11 12 accordingly your treatment will vary therefore now the absolute chronological age he is going out therefore the pediatric international pediatric association from there i have brought this uh, has come out with a term gynecological age and that is where the minarchy day time duration from minarchy comes in and at what gynecological age can we be confident of our diagnosis of pcos based on clinical history girish please yes sir eight years so nowadays <laughs> adolescent pcos is morely diagnosed on the basis of the guidelines given by 2018 ishre guidelines and whatever uh, guidelines you told about the irregular menses they were the 2018 ishra guidelines for the irregular menses they are not considered within for two years first from the menarche and probably uh, the age the gynecological age is the uh, age of that girl from the uh, from the uh, from her menarche so within the first two years of her life the irregular cycles they are never considered for the diagnosis of the uh, adolescent pcos because it it mostly it is because of the immaturity of the hypothalamus pituitary or any axis so after age, after 2 years uh, of her uh, age after the menarche then if she is presented clinically with the signs of irregular menses in the form of uh, as you have told that the cycles below 21 year 21 days or cycles about uh, 45 days 45. Uh, the or any uh, one episode of the cycle uh, uh, for more than 90 days or uh, uh, eight to nine cycles in a year so these are the three criteria where we can label her uh, as having the irregular cycles along with the clinical or pathological evidence of this uh, uh, hyperandrogenism then and then we should label that girl as uh, the case of adolescent pcos and be before eight years of her uh, this gynecological age usually the usg should not be taken that is the pcm should never be taken as I'm a coming to the usg i'm coming to the usg but here we are still on critical and uh, 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 whether dipali ben would like to uh, step in uh, or raju bhai can step in raju bhai would you like to step in uh, if you are here uh, because he is a very sincere man i have known him for last 30 years he must be here is raju bhai here raju i think bhai he left I think he left before about five yeah. minutes. Okay, no, five. no, I am here. I am. I am. Ah, here. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Raju, my, chala, chala, chala. Mm -hmm. I am waiting for you. Uh, Raju, my, can you see the slide? Yeah. Uh, Mrs. A, ten years of age, has irregular menstrual cycle, menarche for about one year. Should we start investigating them for PCOS? No, no, not no. at all. Okay, fine. Mrs. A, thirteen years of age now, has irregular menstrual cycle, menarche for about four years. should we start investigating for pcs yeah yeah now yeah. now yes okay. or uh, raju bhai i'm 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 uh, i'm pleading your indulgence in one more recommendation or one more ntd we just come up can we call this as at risk rather than calling them as pcs does it make a difference yes 
They might yes. not be PCO, but they are at risk for PCO. Of PCO, PCO. yes. Yes. Exactly. Right. Rajubai, thank you. And this is the easiest of all. This is A, 18 years of age, has irregular menstrual cycles, minarchy for about nine years. Should we start investigating for PCOs now? Yes. Yes, yes. 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 Rajubai, thank yes. you so much.